Joe Biden and Donald Trump are going to debate. The Biden administration, uh, or Biden campaign, I should say, uh, essentially acknowledging they're losing and they're afraid that Joe Biden's debates could cost him the election. So they're providing an escape hatch. They want a June debate and a September debate. They don't want October debates. They don't want three debates, and they don't want the Presidential Commission on Debates to handle the debating. What's notable about that is the Presidential Commission on Debating is a massive nonprofit with millions of dollars in assets that uh, the Republicans in 2022 said they no longer wanted any part of, and the Democrats attacked them for saying that. And now Joe Biden himself is saying, I'm not going to participate in a presidential uh, debate commission debate. Uh, Here's my criteria, essentially ABC, CBS, NBC, or CNN. Uh, You pick, Donald, which one of those do you want? CNN came out and said, we'll do a June debate in Atlanta. And Trump says, sold. And then ABC News came out and said, we'll do a September debate. And Biden said, sold. And Trump said, sold. And so now we've got our debate scheduled. What was weird was how Joe Biden announced it. He did this little cute video. But there's a problem with it. And we need to talk about the problem with the video and why Joe Biden wants a June debate. And again, I have to think as an outsider looking at the situation, a June debate by Joe Biden signals profound weakness. In fact, a June debate by Joe Biden really says to me that he's not really up for any sort of major contest and and he's concerned deeply about screwing up and costing himself the election. Let, let me play for you the Joe Biden video so you get a sense of this. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. And since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. Okay. I'm going to play this for you again. That That's, that's the video. That's what he did, 14 seconds, to say he'll do a debate. Go ahead, make my day, pal. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. I'm going to play this again, and you're going to hear me say the word cut. Just just follow along with me here because you're on radio. You can't see this. Here we go. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. Since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. Now, what was that? Those cuts. That's how many takes it appears it took them to do the video, uh, to do 14-second video. There are jump cuts back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That suggests editing. Maybe there was none, but there appears to have been editing. If you follow Biden's eyes and the like, uh, there was editing. It took him... Five, six cuts to do a 14-second video to challenge Donald Trump to a debate. That's why he's doing a June debate. Listen, let's just let's do worst case scenario for Joe Biden. He does a June debate when no one's paying attention. A presidential debate in June, which by the way, neither one, neither he nor Donald Trump will have accepted formally their party's nomination at that time. He does a June debate, the end of June, like the 27th or something, and flubs it so bad that it's his escape hatch to get out of the race in August. That's the early speculation. I I, I would treat this seriously. Joe Biden's polling sucks. Uh, he's lost the confidence of the American people. So he does a debate in early ju- or late June, shows he doesn't have what it takes to be on the debate stage with Donald Trump, let alone run the country, he can say, oh, all right, my polling's in free fall now. It's time for me to get out. This is his way of trying to stop the polling. This is Joe Biden wants an early debate, a, a late June debate, which is early in the presidential season before either man has formally accepted their party's nomination because he needs to change the directory of the race, the trajectory of the race. That's what's going on here. That's why he's doing it. He was guarded enough to try to pick a forum to lead Donald Trump, so it's going to be CNN. 
It's going to be in Atlanta. And then Joe Biden did not want a studio audience. Joe Biden's afraid of being booed by the American public. I mean, the the news channels, they could have picked a crowd, could have brought in college students, could have brought in undecided voters. I mean, CNN has a vast array of resources that CNN itself could have put on a debate with a live studio audience that was focus group to be undecided independents, of which there are many in Georgia, in the metro Atlanta area, where they're going to have the debate, and Joe Biden didn't want to take a chance of being booed or heckled. Joe Biden does not want the American public in the room with him when he debates. That's not the sign of a candidate who is confident in re-election. Now, I know what the Democratic spin is. The Democratic spin is, oh, he's so confident he's going to run election. One of them might have, well, go on out there right now and start these debates. Well, then why just two if you're that confident? Why not the traditional three? Because traditionally there are three. Traditionally there's a vice presidential debate. You're not doing that either, it seems. So you don't want Kamala Harris to debate a vice presidential nominee. Now, maybe because Trump doesn't have a, a VP pick yet, they'll do that later. Maybe the presidential debate commission will be involved with that one. I kind of doubt it. They've thrown the commission under the bus. It's just kind of remarkable to me that the Democrats want to spin this as Joe Biden doing this from a position of strength because he came out with a 14-second video that had to be edited five or six times with different jump cuts. That's your position of strength because he wants a June debate, the earliest presidential debate in history between two-party candidates, you you want an, a super early debate. Why do you want that early debate, particularly during the summer when people are distracted? No one's really paying attention. Why do you want a debate when no one's paying attention? You don't want that if you're winning. You don't want that from a position of strength. You don't want the American people in the room with you when you debate the other candidate. That's not from a position of strength. Now, I know the Democrats, they'll come up with some creative spin. I'm sure we will have a, 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 a great time on social media where Democrats trying to tell us that this actually means that, that Joe Biden is in a massively strong position. I know they'll puff up their chests and they'll say whatever it takes to try to convince the American people this is good, but this isn't good. This is not a position of strength. This is a position of profound weakness by a man who is losing. Now, the other interesting thing, again, is the Presidential Debate Commission. When Republicans said they didn't trust the Presidential Debate Commission and they wanted no part of it, Joe Biden and his team attacked the Republicans. They attacked Republicans for trying to tear down uh, historic American institutions of vital importance to our democracy. And now Joe Biden himself is bypassing the Presidential Debate Commission. It's a nonpartisan group designed to schedule these debates, and he's bypassing it too. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. I, I, I guess he didn't believe all that rhetoric. This is a fascinating day. So now there will be two debates. There will be the CNN debate in June. There will be an ABC debate in September. All this is going to do, though, and, and whether it was intentional or not, one of the things that this is absolutely going to do is drive the speculation that part of what Joe Biden is trying to do is provide himself an escape hatch. I mean, that it, it, he opens the door to this. His polling so bad, they had to have seen it coming, except I don't think they did see it coming. His campaign has been so bad at just the basic political blocking and tackling of campaigns. It's been so bad at trying to maneuver. They should have, a competent campaign would have seen it coming, that this is going to amp up the speculation that this is Joe Biden's escape hatch. He has a debate with Donald Trump at the end of June that's going to be at a poorly watched time as people are out of town getting ready for the 4th of July holiday. It's going to be on CNN without a studio audience. And if he has a terrible debate, he can say, you know what, I this is why I'm doing it before my party nomination, I can bow out. But that's the point. He is doing it before he's formally the party nominee. He is doing it before he is formally renominated to be on the ballot in November. So if he flubs it, he can walk away and say, you know what, I'm going to be a one-term president after all, and I'm going to unbind my delegates. They're no longer committed to me. Y'all can go with someone else. Over to you, Kamala Harris. I don't think it was intentional, 
but I think it was obvious this was going to happen. Let me jump back to Bidenomics real quick. You know, Americans for Prosperity, they did that website, Bidenomics.com. The Biden team should have bought that domain. They embraced Bidenomics. They wrapped Joe Biden in the label of Bidenomics, and they didn't go by that unique name that was so obviously going to be bought by someone and turned into a URL and turned into a website. It, it was obvious that was going to happen, and the Biden team didn't do it. It was basic incompetence at the campaign level. Given that basic incompetence at the campaign level, I don't think they were competent enough to say, hey, let's do this at the uh, – let, let's let's – do a debate, and it gives us a way out if Joe Biden flubs it. I, I don't think they were competent. If they weren't competent enough to buy Bidenomics, they weren't competent enough to think, let's do an escape hatch debate. The problem is they also weren't competent enough to realize that by doing this in June, before you've secured your party's nomination, of course people are going to look at the polling, they're going to look at the campaign and say, this is an escape hatch. This is what he's doing. Of course, it's obvious from an outside perspective that this is the way it's going to be spun. There's no other way to spin it. Joe Biden wants to have a debate with Donald Trump at the end of June, and if he sucks as bad as he probably is, considering how many takes he had to do it to do a 14-second video, game over, he's out. He says, one-term president, goodbye, America. His campaign is not competent. The only thing they've got is the money to stave off a Trump campaign. They've got the money to build a ground operation because all of Donald Trump's money is going to his lawyers. But look no further than Maryland. Last night they had a primary in Maryland, and Dave Trun, who was the um, what the total wine guy, ran for the U.S. Senate, outspit his opponent massively, and he lost. At some point, name ID doesn't matter. And when you're the president of the United States and everybody knows who you are, your name ID and your money really don't matter that much. What matters is you run a competent campaign. And this was not a competent thing for Joe Biden to do, to do this this early so all of us can speculate he's doing this in June because if he sucks, he can drop out because his campaign he's losing right now. He's got to do something to staunch the bleeding. If he doesn't, it's his exit strategy, whether he intended it or not. And I don't think they actually intended it. They're not competent enough to think that way. It's been clear so far, but that's what will happen. 